Hey everybody, for those of you who are new to my channel and just watching this video because you're having this particular problem with your truck, uh, you wouldn't uh, realize that I had actually just done a repair on this truck regarding the throttle linkage. Now, I had uh, shown during that repair video that I had begun to have a problem with my tachometer being intermittent. The tachometer was acting up on this truck a little bit uh, during the process of working on this truck with the throttle um, linkage problem. And I said it's so intermittent that there are times where um, it'll act up a little bit and then it'll just go away. The problem will go away and it'll be fine for, for miles and miles and miles. Well, interestingly enough, what ended up happening was on the first test drive after I replaced the uh, throttle linkage, I um, did not encounter any problems or barely any problems with the tachometer. However, about a week or so later, I needed to take the truck on the highway and the truck behaved fairly well. I don't even think I remember seeing the tachometer stop working once during that whole time. But as soon as I got on the highway and I started to get up over about 50 miles an hour, I realized the truck was refusing to shift into overdrive or the torque converter was not locking up. I'm not sure what, but something was really wrong with the transmission. And I noticed that the tachometer was not working. And then what would happen is, as I continued to drive, every once in a while the tachometer would come up. And as soon as the tachometer would come up, the truck would shift or the tr tor torque converter would lock up or whatever was supposed to happen would happen. And everything would be fine for about five or ten seconds and then it would immediately the tack would go out in addition to that i had a lot of other weird things happening and i'll um i'll discuss those in a minute all right so i'm gonna have to go handheld here with the gopro i'll try not to be too shaky um now in the cab of the truck obviously and so i'm going to turn the ignition key to the on position just to show you what normally happens with the lights normally we have the check engine gen light oil light um all those lights come on the wait to start light comes on until the timeout on the wait to start um, in other words the preheat is done and it's ready to start that goes out that's normal operation okay what is not normal and what was happening and we'll try and do a test drive and try and demonstrate that if it wants to act up the tachometer would work and not work the fuel gauge appeared to stay working all the time. The oil pressure gauge appeared to stay working all the time. The battery gauge appeared to be operating normally all of the time. And the temperature gauge appeared to be operating all of the time. The speedometer also seemed to be operating all of the time. So as far as gauges go, it was really the tachometer was the only one that was intermittent. However, as I continued to drive it, on the highway and it was acting really strange and doing a lot of weird things I started to make some mental notes of some other things it was doing because I realized they may very well be good clues as to what exactly is going on with this thing and one of the things that was happening was the two lights that were illuminated right here when I first turned the key on the check engine and the gen light That yellow check engine light and that GEN for generator, which is a, that's a, that's a relic from the old days. Those two lights and the wait to start light would intermittently turn on and off. And I don't mean like on and off, like in a steady, like it's on and it's off. I mean, sometimes it would come on for a second or two. Sometimes they would flicker and go out. So that's a clue as to what might be going on here. I also, during my testing, turned on the overdrive off switch, which causes this little light right here to illuminate, and noticed that when it would act up, that light would go out. I also <clears throat> found that I could not turn on the cruise control. When I turn the cruise control on, this little green light is supposed to light up. And I couldn't get this to turn on at all. 
But in the periods when the tachometer would start working normally, I was able to turn on the cruise control and this light would come on. And then the light would go out as soon as it malfunctioned again. And that's as far as I got as far as making notes. The only other thing I didn't do was I didn't see whether or not, because it's so cold out, I didn't see whether or not the air conditioning works. And the reason why I mention that now is because I did a lot of research online about this problem. So... As the title has already said, this is a 1997 Dodge Ram with a Cummings 5.9 12-valve mechanical pump, P-pump, diesel engine. Uh, this one happens to be a one-ton. Not that that should make much difference. It's uh, only got 113,000, that's right, for a 97, that's low, 113,000 original miles on it. Turns out these trucks have this problem quite a bit. The debate, or at least the debate in my mind, is what's causing it. Now, you're probably going to see a lot of people will uh, might even comment on this, this video and give some ideas about what to do. And you can go on a lot of the forums. There are a lot of great forums online for these trucks, and particularly the diesels. And there are threads, many threads in there about this particular problem. And I've weeded through a lot of them. And what I've learned is that there are several possible issues that can cause this problem. And a lot of people take the, um, the I used to call it, back when I worked on electronics, I used to call it the hunt and peck method. <laughs> And what that meant was you take a guess that it's the component that you think it might be and you replace that component and hope for the best. And if the component's cheap and it's not difficult to replace, that's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, especially if it's a high probability that that's the component based on previous um, experiences. So in other words, like if in the, in the example of a TV set, if a particular model of TV set would exhibit a particular problem every time capacitor located at C612 went bad, that's a really good indication. So C612 was an inexpensive capacitor. We would replace it and boom, the problem would be fixed. We basically uh, didn't have to go through any of the troubleshooting. That's all fine and dandy. Intermittent problems are, are some of the most difficult to track down, though. So the problem is, you in the hunt and peck method with an intermittent, you put in the component that you think is bad, and you test it, and everything seems normal, and you think, aha, I solved the problem. And then the problem comes back. Now you're left with, well, did the new component fail, or was it not the new component at all? Well, that's also, you know, either one of those are, are possibilities. So you try and narrow things down. You try and get some of that information on past history of other vehicles of the same type and with the same type of problem. And what I found was that it turns out there's a lot of people replacing a lot of components. And sometimes they say it's fixed. But sometimes they abandon the thread in the form. So they don't come back and they tell you, hey, you know what, turns out the problem came back. Uh, you know, a month later, or a week later, or a few days later. Uh, sometimes people just disappear. Uh, that happens. But I also found plenty of threads where the original poster with the problem was very good about coming back and reporting his success, success or failures. I mean, I read one post, one long thread, and this guy, he spent over $100 on a throttle position sensor, one of the possible culprits. And that didn't solve the problem. He spent, I think, over $100 on the, um, what, and there's a debate about this. I'm gonna, we're going to call it the, the crankcase position, the crankshaft position sensor. We're going to call it the crankshaft position sensor. There's also a debate that this might be more properly called the engine speed sensor because they, some people say that on a diesel that we're not looking at the position of the crankshaft, that we're more looking at just the, the RPMs of the uh, the crankshaft, or at least that's what the PCM, which um, which is the control module, the, the the computer brain, okay, of the truck's engine and everything else, what that's looking at. There's also people who talk about a, a transmission speed sensor. 
Um, I think there may even be something on the rear differential. I don't exactly remember, but I'm going, I'm getting ahead of myself. But anyways, you've got a lot of ex fairly expensive components here uh, that you can try and replace to solve the problem that may very well not solve the problem at all because the other possibilities are bad grounds. So if you've got a, a mechanical ground, whereas like an eye lit on a wire loom that's bolted to a engine bracket or something and acts as, a, acts as an electrical ground point, that electrical ground point may be for several circuits. And when that ground goes bad or develops high resistance, okay, where it doesn't open completely, but the resistance goes up, that's going to cause anything that particular ground is associated with to go haywire. That could easily explain why you might get multiple weird things happening that aren't really normally associated with each other. Okay? So, keep that in mind. The other possibility is the wiring itself. This is a 1997. It's not so much always about the miles. It's about the age. This truck, this wiring loom in this vehicle is subjected to broad temperature changes from when the engine's running and hot down to when it's freezing cold and sitting here. Uh, mechanical vibration, fatigue. The wires over time can develop breaks. You can develop a break inside the insulation that wouldn't even be visible but can cause a bad connection. You can develop a situation where the insulation becomes damaged and the inside conductor on the wire is allowed to short out against something. If, for instance, that's on a 5-volt supply line that's supposed to be for a bunch of sensors and stuff, and it shorts out, well, you're going to lose all of those sensors, and the PCM is not going to be too happy about that. Another quick thought, um, the PCM. There are people who have thought that the problem was caused by the PCM itself and have gone through the trouble of replacing the PCM. My understanding based on what I've read online is that the PCM for this truck is not available and that, or if it is available, it's so crazy expensive, uh, it's just nuts. For whatever reason, people are being left with the choice of either trying to find a good used PCM out of a junkyard, which are far and few between from what I've read, or having a company rebuild the PCM. There are companies that advertise that if you send them your PCM, they will rebuild it and you get it back good as new. Now, there's also people, mechanics, who have said that they have yet to find, to find, uh, to find a company that appears to be doing a good job at rebuilding these PCMs. Now, there's also probably a lot of guys, a lot of companies that rebuild these PCMs that are getting a bad rap for not doing a good job on a PCM because the PCM gets back to the customer. Uh, the customer installs it in the, in the vehicle they're working on and the problem's still there. And they think, ah, this damn PCM's still bad. Well, maybe it's not. I don't know. But I will say this. The majority of mechanics, professionals, seem to agree on the point that with this particular problem, the PCM is usually not the suspect which is great news because, again, of the difficulty in acquiring one or the high expense or both. So what I'm going to do now is, um, uh, bat truck's been sit for a couple weeks, so um, charging the battery back up. I got the core block heater on because it is um, a couple of days before Christmas, 2018, and so the truck's kind of cold. We're going to get this truck started, and we're going to see uh, what we've got for, uh, you know, for uh, ghosts in the machine. Oops. Oh, there you go. See the tack going crazy? Now, notice the tack is the only thing that's acting up right now. I'm not getting any of the weird lights flashing. Nothing abnormal there. 
However, I am not able to turn on my cruise control. Although, that's interesting, the overdrive off light is coming on, even though the tack is not working. Hmm, okay. All right, I've dri driven a few miles now, and uh, I've only seen the uh, tachometer come on intermittently for like a second or so at a time, like maybe two two times. So the tachometer is like pretty, pretty much almost completely dead now. And the gen, oh, look at that. Make a liar out of me, why don't you? You know, it's funny. I've got my foot on the brake lightly, and I just felt when that tachometer came up, I felt the transmission like lock up and actually try and pull the truck forward. Look at it. Now that I stopped, I was just about to say I'm going to head back to the house because I can't even get this thing to act intermittently anymore. And now it's back. Look at that. Now it's staying. Now it's gone. Okay. So you get the gist of it. The thing it's not doing that it was doing the other day, though, is uh, I only saw the gen light and the engine check engine light come on briefly, like one time during this whole drive. Of course, I'm trying to watch the road, so I can't watch constantly, but then you catch it. So the fact that the tachometer barely comes on at all, hopefully that'll make this a little bit more uh, easy to track down. It's not as intermittent as it has been. and. The other thing I want to talk about right here is that the all of these th these problems that I had that were very minor before have been much much worse ever since I replaced the throttle linkage. And to replace the throttle linkage and repair the bell crank assembly, I had to remove the throttle position sensor. I did not unplug it. I only unbolted it from its position. So, naturally one might think, oh, it's probably the uh, throttle position sensor. Well, that's possible. My only problem is I don't understand why the throttle position sensor has anything to do with the tachometer circuit. That's where I'm kind of flummoxed about that. Another possibility, though, is I had to undo the wiring harness uh, where it mounts and physically push the wiring harness out of the way. So, another possibility is that if there's a break somewhere in that wiring or a bad connection in that wiring or shorting connection in that wiring, it's quite possible that me moving that wiring loom out of position and moving it back is what's exasperated my problem. All right, so I'm going to stop filming here and, and uh, head back to the house. So, I just drove about a quarter of a mile and I uh, saw the gen and check engine lights come on and while they were coming on all three of these lights over here the wait to start and the two lights that are on either side of it which I don't even remember what they're for uh, they all lit up so that's the other thing that I was getting so now it's starting to act a little bit more screwy as uh, as the drive wears on I decided I'm gonna stop at my um, my local auto um, parts store and ask them whether or not they've got a scanner because I want to see what trouble codes the PCM has stored or seen because I mean I would love to see a lot of the codes aren't going to make much sense to me you know uh, well I mean they're, they're going to be kind of obvious like uh, you know, no tachometer output or something I don't know who, don't, who the hell knows but I would love to see a code that says something like um, Five volt supply is missing, you know, because that would be like, oh, okay, there you go. I got to find out why the five volt supply is coming and going. All right, so I just left. I just left my first auto parts store, and he put the scanner on there, and he said there's no codes, but he said that the scanner that he has only shows codes if the check engine light is on, and I don't have a check engine light on um, code. So he said there are other scanners that can be more complete. So just for the heck of it, I'm going to try one other auto parts store and see if they use a different scanner that might show something. You can see that tachometer is twitching, twitching, twitching. Alright, so let's hit that other store and see what happens. Alright, well... Since I'm not going to have any uh, trouble codes that are going to help me out, 
I figured I got to look at this another way. So I started to look at the wiring diagram and um, I noticed that over here on the wiring diagram, there's a five volt supply and that five volt supply. So it might be kind of hard to see. I don't know if this is going to focus or not, but there is a five volt supply right here on the PCM and uh, PCM, by the way, stands for powertrain control module. Now I know what it means. Okay, anyways, uh, that wire, it says it's VIO slash WHT. The first VIO means violet. That's the main body of the wire is violet. WHT means it's got a white stripe. So we're looking for a violet wire with a white stripe. Well, that 5-volt supply, if I trace it, it eventually goes to uh, a couple different places. But what's interesting to me is that it goes to the throttle position sensor. It also goes to the um, crankshaft position sensor. So I believe the crankshaft position sensor sends a signal to the powertrain control module to tell the powertrain control module how fast the engine's turning. So if it does not have a signal from the um, crankshaft position sensor, then it would make sense that I would get the zero tachometer. The point being is that that's a five volt line that's common to more than one of these systems. So I think I want to try and find out where that 5 volt line is and see if that 5 volts is erratic. Also, the ground circuit for the uh, throttle position sensor and that um, crankshaft position sensor are also common to each other. All right, so right up here on the front of the engine, it was an area where these three plastic sleeves of the wiring loom converge this one running off in this direction over towards the alternator um, this one running back towards the uh, rear of the uh, towards the firewall and then this one right here which runs up here which is these are the, the heavy gauge wires which are uh, supplying the power to the uh, preheating coil inside the uh, air intake but inside that also is all these small wires and this is also the junction point where this little taped up wiring harness right here joins the party and that goes to a plug right there and then that coming out of the plug actually goes down and disappears down below there that's going to that crankshaft position sensor that we've been talking about now you can't get your hand in there to wiggle that harness that wiring harness even if you wanted to without running while well, the engine's running without the danger of losing your fingers from the fan here so but <clears throat> you uh, notice when I come back over here to where these wires come in you'll see there's a purple wire with a white stripe right here this purple wire with the white stripe is the 5 volt supply to that uh, sensor and interestingly enough one of these other wires going to it is the wire that sends the signal back to the PCM and the third wire is the ground wire I believe and the funny thing is that we've got a grounding point right here on the top of the uh, front of the engine okay and that's got more than one wire grounded to it but interestingly enough they're not grounding they're not using that ground they're running back to somewhere else back there in no man's land well anyways what I want to do now is now that I have this all undone I want to uh, run the engine again have my son who's my assistant today watch the tachometer and I want to wiggle some of these wires around here I did see one wire I think it was this one right here and that one right there actually has got a pretty bad kink in it looks like it might have been stressed Oh, we might get lucky it might be right up in the front here all right so no amount of wiggling these wires in here seems to be making a difference and it's been intermittent the whole time uh, it doesn't matter whether i'm wiggling it or not sometimes it'll stay for you know a minute or so and then sometimes it just goes away the tack i mean so what i decided to do was i disconnected this plug down here that goes to the crankshaft position sensor and I ran the engine with that disconnected, knowing full well I should not get any tachometer response with that disconnected. However, what that allowed me to do was that allowed me to take my voltmeter. I took my voltmeter 
okay, grounded it to the battery, and I probed the pin with the violet wire with the white stripe, which is the 5 volt supply to that sensor. And sure enough, I got like 5.1 something volts. So I got a good 5 volt supply there. But what I did was I watched it and I watched it for a couple of minutes and it never wavered. It never, it never went to zero. It never uh, fluctuated as if like there was an erratic. I even wiggled the wiring while I did that and it stayed rock solid. So the 5 volt supply to that sensor seemed to be perfectly fine. So all I did after that was I shut the truck off. I plugged the plug back in. After I plugged the plug back in and I started the truck, tachometer came back right away, which I wasn't surprised about that. The interesting thing is it stayed. It stayed so long that, as a matter of fact, I had my son watch it while I went in the house to wash my hands enough so I could take a test drive. And uh, came back out a couple minutes later, and he said the entire time the tachometer stayed up. So, I'm wondering whether or not it could have been something as simple as a bad connection with a where that plug plugs into there. I mean, I'm skeptical. I don't think that's it. But the fact of the matter is that now, all of a sudden, it seems to be working. So, I just shut the truck down so that I could uh, be heard on the GoPro video. And uh, I did start, shut it down when I came back out and started it up, and it came back right away. So now let's take all of the uh, tools out of the way, and uh, we'll start it again. And if it seems like it's holding, we'll take it for a test drive and see what happens. Take it for a drive and we'll see what happens. All right, so I just uh, put it in drive, drove about 300 feet, if that, to get out onto the road and it crapped out again. It's gone. So. Watch. See? Speedometer works. That just goes to show you how frustrating diagno diagnosing this kind of a problem can be. Uh, now it's not working at all. Again. You know? So it's weird, you know, unplug that sensor, plug it back in, all of a sudden it starts working. Eh. I mean, it could be a bad sensor. My question would be, if the sensor was bad, how come the tack isn't the only problem? Why do those lights flash on and off? Okay, so I've decided that the next course of action I'm going to take is I'm going to try and adjust the position of the crank position sensor or the engine speed sensor, uh, depending on who you ask. But essentially this is a uh, device that that plug I showed you that I was messing with goes down to and it basically it's a it's a pickup and it measures how fast the crankshaft is running and i went online and it seems like a misadjusted or faulty crank position sensor is often the cause of this particular problem of the tack not working but can also cause other systems not to work because the PCM, the powertrain control module, needs to see a signal from the crank position sensor so that it knows that the engine is running, I guess is, is the way that it was explained in, in a lot of these posts. So if the crank position sensor is not sending a signal, what can happen is the PCM actually thinks the motor is not running. So if that makes sense. All right, now this is uh, obviously only on a 12 valve because on a 24 valve, you know, uh, 98 and uh, after 98, they went to the 24 valve and they went to the, the electronically controlled uh, injector pump. So there is a ECM, engine control module on there that actually regulates a lot of this stuff, so. 
All right, so this is just on this engine. On this engine, it's a mechanical P-pump, 12-valve uh, Cummins. This thing, you can basically strip all the electrics off it, and this thing will still run. So the powertrain control module needs to know that the engine's running. So uh, we could try and adjust the gap on there. Uh, went online and found that the gap is supposed to be 49 to 52 thousandths of an inch. And uh, the other thing you can do is make sure that it's clean because I guess oil can get on there. And I'm wondering how dirty that sensor might be because I know I had a uh, bad oil pan that had to be replaced. So, so for starters, we'll see if we can't take it out and uh, take a look at it. So once again, if I put my radiator hose forward here, uh, this plug right here at the front of the engine comes out of this wiring harness. Right there, that three pin plug, that goes down to the, the sensor I'm talking about is actually right there. So that disc thing right there, I believe that's the harmonic balancer, I think is what they call that thing. Well, anyways, that's on the front of the crankshaft. If you look, there's a notch right there underneath the crank position sensor right now. So right now, it's actually not in the spot where you want to make the adjustment. You want to actually have the crankshaft rotated so that it's not sitting directly underneath. The, that notch is not directly under the sensor. And then you put a non-metallic uh, feeler gauge and uh, some guys have even used matchbook covers and playing cards and things like that to set that. So anyways, there's a nut right there and then there's a nut right there I gotta loosen. But I'm thinking I might even just take that, I might take it off just so I can see. Actually, it doesn't look like there's a lot of oil on that thing. So I think maybe I'll just set it. I guess, you know, what I could do is I could check the gap first. All right, so I unbolted the sensor completely instead of just loosening it because I wanted to turn it over and I wanted to examine the side of the sensor that faces down just to see if it needed to be cleaned. And what I discovered is it almost appears to me like the sensor may have been rubbing on the, uh, on the balancer. I'm wondering whether or not this loosened up and actually came in contact with the harmonic balancer all at some point. That looks like it's rubbed pretty bad right there. So my game plan now is going to be to... Um, I'm going to try and gap this thing and put it back in. And then if that doesn't work, I think I'm just going to order a new sensor. It's, uh, you know, it's a guess. We'll call it an educated guess only because there's so many people have had this problem solved by replacing the sensor or regapping it. All right. Not much to do with the wiring. The wiring, the new sensor comes with a wiring harness. So if there's a break in the wire here, which could also cause the problem. And of course, I can't wiggle this wire while the engine's running because I can't get my hand down in here because of the fan. All right, so I reset the gap on that uh, sensor. That sensor is magnetic, so that's why you're supposed to use a uh, non-metallic or shim, or I guess anything, any shim that's not going to be affected by magnetism. So I, I just used this piece of aluminum that I had. This is about 35 thousandths, so it's a little thinner than it should be. But online, they say that people use matchbook covers or playing cards, and that's even less. That's even thinner, so... We'll give this a shot and see what happens. Well, so much for that. Right off the bat, not working at all. So I'm gonna go with uh, replacing that sensor. 